All right, welcome to part two of the maze tutorial. So the last thing we need to do here is create the little goal. So let's actually come back here to the content folder and right click and say blueprint class. And of course, this is gonna be an actor. So select actor and we'll call this BP underscore goal. And inside of here, let's open this up. So we wanna add a static mesh to represent the goal itself. So this static mesh, and we'll add that. And you can, you can obviously make this whatever you want. I'm just gonna use a cylinder for it. So I'm gonna select cylinder down here. Actually, let's use the shape one, shape underscore cylinder, this guy. And then we wanna probably change the size of it. So let's see, if we drag this into our board, I just wanna look at what size it is. Yeah, so it's a little big, so maybe we want to scale it down by half. So let's say the scale is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We compile and we look at it again. All right, so this looks like a more realistic little goal thing. Um, and we can actually delete it because we don't want to do that. I just want to look at the size of it. And so what we want to do here is we want to we want to make it so that when the ball overlaps with the cylinder, it or, or the goal, it essentially broadcasts a message and says, hey, you, you know, you've won the game. So we can actually delete all this stuff. And we want to select our static mesh over here, which is our cylinder. And we want to say, right click, add event on component begin overlap. So this is going to get called whenever anything overlaps with the cylinder. So if we drag off of this, we want to check if the thing that overlapped with it is the ball. So we'll say cast to BP underscore ball. And if it is, um, we can just add a little print string here just so we can make sure it's working. We'll just say winner, that up. But the important thing we wanna do here is we wanna broadcast an event to let others know that we've won the game. So in the event dispatchers down here, let's add an event dispatcher and we'll call it on ball overlap. And then we can drag this in and then say call. So we're basically just calling that event and whoever happens to be listening for this event will get notified. And so that's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a couple of little things we need to do though as well. So the static mesh over here, which is the cylinder, we wanna make sure that this cylinder is set up so that it can overlap things. So if we select the cylinder and we scroll down, we wanna make sure the collision preset, we wanna change this to overlap all dynamic because again, we want it to overlap with things. We don't want it to actually block the ball, right? We want the ball to be able to go through it. And then the other thing I did is I added a cool little material to it. Um, if you remember from my other project, it was like a green material and it was kind of pulsing a little bit um, instead of this kind of ugly white texture. So that way it actually looks like a goal. So let's just do that real quick. So it'll be pretty easy. Um, so over here, let's right click and make a new material. Call it M underscore goal. And if we open this guy up, the first thing we want to do is you want to change the type of it from opaque to translucent. So that way it can be, it's like, uh, well, it can be translucent, right? So we'll change it to translucent. And then we wanna set a base color for it. So if we hold down three and left click, it will create a constant three vector and we can hook that up. And then we can select the color here. So I'm just gonna select some sort of green color. Like so, and then the thing we wanna change here is the opacity. And so we wanna change the opacity so that it kind of, you know, pulses um, the opacity of it. So it goes from, you know, very translucent to not very translucent. So to do that, we're gonna use the sine curve. So we'll say sine, and we want the input to be time, right? So it changes over time. And then we can hook that up to sine. And then we wanna take this value because sine is gonna be a value from negative one to positive one. So we wanna clamp that range from, you know, we wanna change the range from negative one to positive one to something like 0 0.25 to 0 0.75. So that way it never goes fully invisible, but it also never goes fully opaque. So there's a handy little function for that. It's just called uh, remap value range. And so the input's gonna be our sign value. The input low is going to be negative one. So in order to do this, we just have to hold down one and left click and just do that four times because we're gonna need four of these values. So this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here. And so again, it's gonna be negative one, because that's the min of sine, and this is gonna be positive one, which is the max of sine. And then this is whatever you want the low value of the translucency to be, or the opacity to be. So I'm gonna say 0 0.25, and then the max I'm gonna say, oops, 
max I'm going to say is 0 0.75. And you can see when I hook this up now to opacity, and I give it time to go, you can see it kind of pulses. Now, if you want it to pulse faster or slower, then all you have to do is multiply the time value. So if we add a little multiply node here, and hook that up. So whatever value we have here for B is going to be the speed of the pulse. So if I set it to 2, for example, it will pulse twice as fast. And if I set it to 0 0.5, then it will pulse um, half the speed, basically. So I'm going to leave it something like this. Just go ahead and hit Apply and Save. And then back in our BP goal, if we select a static mesh over here, and we scroll up to the materials, we can select our M underscore goal. And you can see now it has this nice pulse effect on the goal. So it's nothing fancy, but it does make it look more like a goal. So that's good. So we can go back here now. Let's see. We need to go back to our uh, maze. So we're actually going to add the goal to the maze itself. And again, make sure you're looking at it from the right angle. Um, so we've got the camera back here. So we want to add the maze, or we want to add the goal up here at top right. So to do that, we can say add component. And we actually want to add a child actor. So child actor. And make sure you do it like I've just done here, where the child actor is a child of the board mesh. And I'm just going to rename this just so it's clear. So maybe in parentheses here, I'll just put goal. So this is the goal, right? Um, so we need to tell the child actor that it's actually of type BP goal. And you can do that over here on the right. So the child actor class, we want it to be BP underscore goal. And when we select that, you can see it actually brings our little goal in. And we want to just drag it to wherever you want the goal location to be. So I want it to be up here at the top right. And the cool thing about this is since it's a child of the board mesh, whenever the board rotates, the goal will rotate with it. So if we compile and save and run this, just to show you, you can see when I rotate the board, the goal is rotating with the board, right? It's staying with the board, which is what we want. So the last thing, oops, the last thing we need to do here is make it so that when the ball gets to the goal, the ball resets. So we already have some logic into the goal. If you remember um, in the event graph, it says when something overlaps with the goal, check if it's a ball, if it is a ball, uh, print out winner and then call this on ball overlap. So basically what we want to do is inside of our ball, we want to listen for that event. So we want to listen for that on ball overlap event. And when that happens, we want to call reset ball. So to do that, we need to bind to that event, that event dispatcher. And we want to do that in the begin play. So up here at the top, after we set the starting location, we want to get our maze. Um, oh, and currently we don't have access to that. So over here on the left, let's add a maze variable. So variable, I call it maze. We want to make this private as well. And we will call it, or we want the variable type to be of type maze, or BP maze rather, like so. And then we want to set this to blueprint read only and instance editable as well. So that way we can edit it over here in this window. So let's do that real quick. So select the ball. And right here where we have the kill height, we now have a maze dropdown as well. And we can select our maze. So this is basically assigning this maze as the reference inside of our ball. So the way our ball can reference our maze. And so now that our ball has a reference to the maze, we can drag in our maze variable and we can say um, hit goal. Um, oh, right. Okay. So I'll just kind of explain the problem. So if we say, get, <laughs> if we say get child actor, um, if you look at the return time of this, it's actually a child actor. It's not a goal. And what we could do is we could say um, get child actor from it. And so now we actually have an actor reference, and then we can cast that to a goal. And so this is how you actually have to get the goal um, from a child actor, because the child actor can be anything, right? It doesn't have to be a BP goal. It could be literally anything. So you have to get the child actor from inside of it and then cast it to the thing you want it to be. And I guess this is probably fine. The way I did it in my other video or my other uh, project, which is probably a lot better, is I just made this into a function of the maze. So let's just do that real quick, just to kind of make things cleaner, because I'm sure in the future, if you add more to this project, you're going to want this functionality because it makes it so much simpler. So just delete these three real quick. And then over here in the BP uh, maze, rather, we want to add a function. So on the left, 
add a function and call it get goal. And then we want to make it pure and constant since it's not changing anything about the maze. And to get the goal, we basically want to do exactly what we just did before. So drag in the child actor goal and say get child actor. And then we want to cast to goal. And then since I know it's going to succeed, I'm just going to right click on this and say convert to pure cast, which will get rid of the execution pins. And then we want to return this. So we can just drag this value over here and it will automatically add a return node for us. And then we can just hook that up. And I'm just going to rename this to goal. And so now, since we have this handy little function back in our ball, we can just say get goal. And it's a lot more condensed and clear as to what is going on here. And so now that we have the goal, we want to get access to that event dispatcher. Because if you remember, inside of BB goal, we added this on ball overlap, which gets called whenever the ball overlaps the goal. So we want to bind this event, right? Because we want notified whenever it gets called. So to do that, we can say uh, sign on ball overlap. And when we do that, it will create two nodes. It creates the actual node to bind it. And then it creates the event that gets called when that event gets dispatched. So we can hook this up. So, and so again, the idea here, if you've never used event dispatchers, is that whenever this gets called right here, it's going to call this function. So essentially, this function is going to get called whenever the ball overlaps the goal. And when that happens, we just want to reset the ball. So we'll drag in reset ball and hook that up. Now, obviously, you might want to do something else here if you're making this into like a real game. So this is essentially, you know, the player has won the game at this point whenever this gets called. So maybe you want to go on to the next level or something like that. So I think that might be all we need to do. Let's run it real quick. And let's actually get to the end here. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long. Oh, come on. Uh, there we go. Maybe I should have moved the goal closer. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so when I hit this, I should reset to the beginning. And there it is. So it seems to be working correct. And again, if I jump off the side here, it also resets. So yeah, I think that might be all. So if you enjoyed the tutorial, uh, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. And I also have a Discord channel. The link is in the description. There's also a Patreon if you guys want to support me there. It's always super appreciated. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.